Welcome to the world of Cuisine Ear, a cozy restaurant management and dungeon crawling game. Within it, you'll find fun, friends, and food, the three F's of gaming. Today, I'm here to tell you all about this game. It's stories, mechanics, and whatever you might need to determine if it's right for you. I'll also try my best to not give you any major spoilers as we, you know, go through this. So expect most of the scenes shown to be from near the beginning of the game. Now let's jump right into this. In Cuisine Ear, you play as Palm, an adventuring cat girl of sorts who's been tricked, I mean, asked to come home to see your parents. Upon arriving, you're met by a longtime friend and are asked to reopen your parents' restaurant, the Potato Palace. Everything seems to be running well until you learn that your parents are actually sort of avoiding a fairly large debt by running away, which has now fallen to you. It is now your aim, no, your responsibility to raise money to pay off your creditors. In order to accomplish this, you'll need to gather ingredients, find recipes, and buy furniture and upgrades for your shop. It might be difficult, but I believe in you. And well, that's that's the premise of the game. It's a setting that immediately reminds me of the likes of Reset Ear, a game that I loved in the past, with its, you know, silly debt collecting ways. Now with that call back out of the way, let's look at the three main places that you'll spend your time while playing this game, as well as the, you know, gameplay elements around them. Cuisine here has three separate yet interconnected areas, elements, locations, or whatever you want to call them in the game. And each is unique with their own functions and things to do. And yet they all affect each other in one way or another. These three areas are the dungeons, the restaurant, and the town. I want to discuss the dungeons first. There are multiple of these throughout the game and throughout the lands, but I'll only show off the first two here because spoiler reasons. It's within these dungeons that you'll truly take advantage of Palm's backstory. You see, you aren't just a chef, you're a treasure hunter and an adventurer, so you're going to be hunting goods. The dungeons are the place that you'll go in order to gather your cooking ingredients, complete tasks for some side quests, and gather building materials for your restaurant and furniture and things. This process will mainly involve searching each floor of a dungeon for creatures or materials, fighting them with a variety of weird weapons, and making your way deeper down into the dungeon for better rewards, harder enemies, and even the prospect of boss fights. Now, there are a variety of different types of enemies, from the weak who try to swarm you to those who try to pout you from a distance, and even some charging brutes who really want to get up in your face. The enemy variety is part of what gives each floor its own difficulty. A floor full of chickens isn't nearly as difficult as fighting chickens and these weird chili pepper things that keep trying to sneak up on you. And they can only manage to sneak up on you because you're focused on dodging multiple projectiles heading your way. It does make for an interesting challenge from time to time that is isn't necessarily always the easiest of things to complete. And this brings me to my first negative, I guess, of the game. And that is that while there are some difficulty options that can make the dungeons a bit easier for you, it does this mostly just by decreasing the amount of damage that you take per hit from the enemy, which could be a good way of doing this. I, I don't know, but honestly, in my head, it doesn't feel like this actually makes the game any easier to me. And that's mostly because, and you'll have to stick with me on this just a little bit. In games like this, or in most games, there's only one hit point that actually matters. Everything before that, everything after that doesn't matter at all. You see, you're either able to live or you aren't. I mean, sure, extra health might allow you time to like retreat if you notice danger or test things out, but it doesn't actually make anything easier. And all this difficulty setting does is basically gives you more health. So I, I, I don't I don't see how it's any easier, but that's just me. Enough of that rant. Let's look at the actual features that you have available to you in the dungeon. First, you have a bag, which, you know, is pretty self-explanatory and this represents the amount of stacks of items that you can carry and if you try to loot more than this well you just won't be able to each stack of materials seems to go to about 30 while ingredients tend to stack to about 20 of each so keep that in mind when exploring the amount of stacks that you can hold in these bags can be expanded back in town which 
I guess we'll talk about later. Second, you have this adventurer's belt at the bottom of the screen. On it, you can store boba tea, which are your potions, and you can also see your two weapons and cooldowns of your specials or how much ammo you have. The belt too can be expanded back in town to allow you to have more boba. Third, within the options, you'll find the ability to turn on or off this indicator line, which is pretty helpful both here and in the restaurant, and it tells you exactly where you're looking before you attack or do an action, which again, Pretty helpful if you need it. Fourth, you have your gloves and an armor slot, which will give you some benefits, although there's a myriad of different passives, so I'm not even gonna bother trying to explain all of them here. Let's just say they can modify how you play the game, so you should try to find some stuff that works well with how you want to play and fight and some general mechanics. Now you have a dash that has a cooldown of about a second and each weapon you equip up to a maximum of two has both a basic and a special attack. The special attack has a cooldown and typically does something interesting. And each weapon that you find has some number of some of the same passives from the armor and the gloves underneath it, which means that they can also work well to change how you play and also some of these passives might be good or bad with the weapon that you get as long as you treat this game like an rpg and modify your playstyle or choose weapons that work with your playstyle should be pretty good and yeah that's most of the basic features of the dungeon if you're able to delve far enough into them you might also be able to find some silly bosses and some rarer reward chests as you go now on to the opposite end of the spectrum we have the potato palace your, your restaurant. This building has two rooms, your bedroom and a service area. Let's start with the bedroom. Now in this room, you'll be able to store materials and eventually the spare ingredients that you find. It's also a place that you can decorate in your own style or just sleep in to advance to the next day. As you upgrade your restaurant, you might see this room expand just a bit too. Okay, now th that room was boring. But next we have the big room and we'll break this into two parts. So first, welcome to the kitchen. After you go into the dungeons, you can store your ingredients for cooking that you wanna use in the fridge where they'll automatically link to whatever cooking stations that you have set up in this room. Each cooking station can be used to cook its own recipes and by default, you only have access to the level one tier of these. Through gathering both resources and gold, you can upgrade each cooking station or fridge to its next tier, which will upgrade both its looks and either the amount of dishes it can cook or the tier of food that you can cook with it. I should note that at the start, you can only have one cooking station total and only by spending gold and materials can you upgrade the restaurant itself, which will then change the total amount of cooking stations that you can place. These upgrades will also update the total number of slots for finished food that appear and the number of fridges that you can have in the kitchen as well. Cooking in this game is fairly simple. You click on a station, click the recipe you wanna make, and if you have the ingredients, the game will passively make the food for you. Once the food is made, you have two options, put it in your bag or serve it to a customers. And these options will mostly depend on whether or not your restaurant is open or not at the time. If it's open, you can't put it in your bag. If it's not open, there's no customers to serve it to. There is one difference here. If you are open for business and a customer has ordered food, if you click on a cooking station, you will only find food that's ordered immediately. You can change this with a button press if you want to make something else beforehand. Oh yeah, and you choose what days you want your restaurant to be open and for how long, although you will take a penalty of health if you decide to open your restaurant before going to the dungeon and you'll always return from the dungeon at 11 p.m. Probably should have mentioned that before. So now we have one more room, the big room, the place where you serve customers and make your money. So for every customer, you need two things. You need a chair and a table. You can buy chairs and tables in town for, well, you guessed it, golden materials. Customers will come into your shop, order food, and well, if they're poor, they'll actually get up and get it. But if they're noble, they won't. Oh, and they'll also probably pay for the food too. Your job with customers is basically to cook what they want and make sure they get it all and also to make sure that they pay personally i find a little dash button from the dungeons to be very useful here and personally i find this whole making food serving food process to be fairly fun and simple with nothing that i find well too difficult at all but i can see how some of the lunch and dinner rushes for customers could be challenging or taxing on people and final final note don't forget to take their money from from this little box here the final area in this game is the town where you do practically 
everything in the game outside of, you know, the dungeon crawling and the restaurants. Here you can talk to NPC villagers, build friendships, earn recipes, buy decorations, upgrade your restaurant, buy weapons, upgrade weapons, buy armor, upgrade armor, buy boba, pay off your debts, and more. Really, this is the stitching for the other parts of the game, where everything comes together. The dungeons is where you get the materials and ingredients, the restaurant is where you use ingredients, store items, and make gold and the town is where you advance the game. It has a variety of NPCs to get to know, with the carpenter being my personal favorite right now, and a number of shops, some of which that change depending on the day of the week. At these shops, you'll get everything from your boba tea, to your furniture, to your weapons. Everything here is pretty well done, and you'll likely spend a good amount of time in your playthrough here in town. And I should also note that this is where you will get your new foods to cook, all of your recipes. So sometimes the NPCs will just have random side quests for you, and instead of paying you in gold for completing them, they'll likely pay you in new food inspirations, which is a neat way to tie all of the locations of the game and their systems together into one overall package. It all comes back to making the restaurant better. Now, there are multiple types of quests in the game, but at the beginning, you'll probably only see the ingredients or food delivery type stuff. And with that, we've covered the core gameplay in the game, all three parts. Cuisine here has a potentially odd focus on three main mechanic areas, which it's trying to balance together at all times. For me, Personally, it works, although not always flawlessly. At times, it feels like I'm progressing through one part of the game much faster than the other two, which leads to some small hiccups here and there with pacing. With that said, if you aren't as crazy about filling your restaurant with only seats or, I don't know, jumping through random floors of the dungeon trying to dodge everything so you can get as many floors down as possible, then yeah, it might not be a problem. I mean, I barely paid off my debts and it's been quite a while and I've earned like three times the amount of money I've needed. But again, if you're not as crazy as I am, this might not be a big problem. But I do have a couple of small things to bring up before we're done with this video. The first is, well, the controls. I played this on a PS4 controller on PC, and while the controller did work natively and the controls worked okay, the default controls are just weird. R1 was like the main confirm button, which is just a little bit off-putting, and it took quite a while to get used to it, and I did get used to it. Although it is possible to rebind the keys as you see fit, and I would recommend doing doing this sooner rather than later if you want to do it. Second, all the dungeons are procedural, so the floors won't be the same each time you go into them, which is good because you'll go back to them a lot. With that said, some of the set pieces will repeat and you'll probably learn them as you go. Finally, the graphics are as you see them. Personally, I think they look good, but the whites sometimes feel a little bit too white. I don't know, it feels a little weird to say. And I personally really like the soundtrack. It feels good for the adventure and the, the cooking part of the game. Now, with all that said, is Cuisineer worth the $25 price tag? And my verdict is... Yes, I would absolutely recommend Cuisineer at its current price point. It feels like a game with a lot of heart and soul put behind it, and this recommendation does actually come with a few caveats. You need to enjoy both the dungeon crawling and restaurant management style of games, as well as understand, if not enjoy, general RPG progression. But if you do all of that, then this game should be a fine addition to your collection. If you don't, yeah, I don't, I, I don't think you'll like like half the game because while the restaurant management is a part of the game that you might like, if you don't like dungeon crawling, it's a major part of the game. With all that said, I, I do think Battle Brew Productions did a great job and I will be keeping an eye on them in the future. I would like to thank the people who make these videos possible, so thank you all. I'm trying to get this channel up to 1,000 subscribers right now, and I'm also trying to work on improving these reviews. So both a subscribe and feedback would be very appreciated. Here's my previous review on Fashion Dreamer if you want to see how far we've come in a week, and thank you for watching.